This may not be suitable for everyone. Some of you may be offended, and I apologize for that. I don't mean a lot of what I am about to say. Well, I kind of do, but I don't. It's supposed to be comedy. Hello. It's good to be here. Inside. Still. 12 days. No interaction with another living human or the outside world. It's great. Thank you, coronavirus. I do think that this whole pandemic has kind of is, is starting to highlight some bigger social problems. For example, my mortgage is supposed to come out tomorrow and I have $4 in my bank account. That's supposed to cover the mountain of debt I hold just to be a barely functioning member of society. That's the expectation. If you don't have a mountain of debt, then society will not accept you. That's the world that we've created for ourselves. People standing on the backs of others to get to higher ground. I'm sick of it. I've had lots of jobs in my lifetime. I've worked for major credit card companies. I've worked for the banks. I've worked for an insurance company. And I've even done a stint in politics. And I must say, of all the jobs I've ever had, by far the most honorable has been selling crack to babies with disabilities. At least it's an honest exchange. There's no interest rates or hidden transaction fees or fine print or hidden agendas. It's, listen, baby, you want the crack? You bring me the money. No crack, no money. That's how it goes. Don't be a cry, baby. Get out of here. Go get the money, baby. This isn't a fucking charity, baby. <laughs> I'm obviously kidding. I, would, I don't sell crack. And I would never sell crack to a baby. I would sell them glue and tell them it was crack. Higher profit margins that way. Sick and tired of these sneaky fuckers pulling the wool over the eyes of honest people like you and me. Something's got to change. Maybe it will. The economy's collapsing. Who knows? That's the end of my set. That's where I would then segue on to like talk about something else like, I don't know, like buttholes or something. Buttholes are funny. They can fart, which has always been hilarious. <laughs> Not bad for a one-inch speaker. Vaginas can sometimes fart. <laughs> That's a funny-looking speaker. Never heard of a penis fart. I bet if I did, that would be hilarious. I imagine it would be more like a whistle, though. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the end of my little bit for you. I don't know if you thought it was funny, rude, offensive, hilarious, uh, or not. Would you go see that live on a stage? Am I ready for the stage? Um, we're going to move to the fly tying station now. It's going to be awesome. So let's go. Welcome back, YouTube, to the last episode of Corona Time. It's my last Corona, so... 
to last episode, season finale. It's a three-part series. Until I get more Coronas, we're going out with a bang. I gave you a little stand-up bit like I promised you I would. I don't know if you think it's funny or not. Just been thinking about it. I kind of, I don't know. Maybe it's funny. You tell me. I hope you weren't offended. Everyone gets offended these days about everything. It's so easy to offend. Um, but, you know, I think it's important to be able to laugh about stuff. I think comedy is healing. And talking about stuff is can be funny. Put the two and two together. Bob's your uncle. My buddy sent me a text this morning. He said, Biggie, he said, hey Quinn, are you worried about catching coronavirus? I fish with him a lot. And I didn't respond. I thought about it for a second. I said, terrified. And he said, I don't know why you would be. You haven't caught anything since 2013. What a funny guy, hey? It's not that funny. Um, heading out into the salt chuck tomorrow to live on an island with my kids and my wife indefinitely. We're going to be harvesting food from the sea. And so I'm tying a saltwater muddler minnow. As you can see, I got a giant hook here. It's a beast. And I'm just going to tie this big, nasty, mean looking thing for, and I'm going to bring my fly rod, my double hand meat stick and see if I can get some ling cod or rock cod, uh, on this fly. So I got this big ass hook, some yellow thread, and I've just kind of made a bit of a body here. Well, I've just wrapped up and down the shank. So the stuff will, that I'm tying to it will bind to it, not just slip around the greasy metal. Rabbit, purple rabbit strip. We're gonna get crazy and we're gonna tie a big ass tail. Something like this would probably work for pike as well. Anything voracious. Voracious. So there we go, we're securing the rabbit strip tail and I'm really gonna just crank things on tight here just I'm just gonna go bananas I don't want anything falling off have you seen a lingcod they're they look like Satan their mouths are just <laughs> big ass teeth huge I even heard a story turn of the century kid was uh fishing for lingcod with rock cod for bait in the skookum chuck narrows six years old Hooked something, fell over, got eaten by an eight foot lingcod. I don't know if it's true, I wasn't there. Not that old. Um, <laughs> coronas make you burp. Fuck, it's almost all gone. It's a really easy beer to drink. You ever notice that? Okay, now, gonna get some copper wire. Just because the teeth on these things, I'm going to use the copper wire to really crank that body down and make it nice and secure. Did I ever tell you about the time I got facial reconstructive surgery in Mexico? Ooh, it's a bit of a long story. I'll give you the nuts and bolts of it though. Oh, there's those scissors. There's some thread. There's all kind. Of, look at those. That's kind of neat. Um, Oh shit, you know what we could do? We could go crazy here. I like this idea that I've come up with. It's important to keep your fly tying stuff organized. So when you're making a video, you know where everything is when you need it. Silver, silver dub, ice dub. I'm gonna do ice dub body. Look at this. This is gonna be just so awesome. Make it greasy, nice and big and thick. Oh, look at that. 
I'm just going bananas over here. Grab yourself a beverage. Uh, tie fly with me, please. I insist. Um, doesn't have to be this. Unless you're doing what I'm doing tomorrow. Um, which would be cool. Maybe we'll see you out there. Okay, now I'm going to leave lots of room for the head. That's going to be do the body just fine. And I'm going to crank that down with some copper wire and that'll give it a bit of extra weight too so this baby can get down to where the cod are. I've caught ling cod in 20 feet of water, big ones too, big sons of bitches. I've also caught them in 210 feet of water so you never know where those lunkers are going to be lunking around. Look at that eh? Just dandy. Nice silver body. And that'll just, you know, work its way out. And then here's a question. Do we put another like zonker type strip in there or, or do we? Oh, I know what we do. Yeah, we put some red bucktail. Is that what we did? You tell me, but I can't hear you. Or do we put yellow bucktail, orange bucktail, or green bucktail? Maybe orange. Orange and purple is kind of a funny color combo, hey? A darker color would be better? Like black? This is polar bear pube. I think I already made that joke before. This is bucktail pubes. Oh, black. Let's go with black. Let's keep a nice dark profile. We're kind of just making things up as we go here, in case you haven't figured that out yet. Idiot. We'll just secure that on. Okay. Now for the tricky part, people. How about before we do that, we throw a little bit of a red collar in here. Oh, the Mexico story. I um, had facial reconstructive surgery in Mexico. What happened was I had a few too many coronas, believe it or not. And I tried to do a backflip. Why'd you turn off? Don't be stupid. A backflip on the beach. What? I took photos. Damn it, I am stupid sometimes. Or is the GoPro stupid? You're stupid, GoPro. Apologies, accepted by you from me. And we're going to tie the head now. So we got some deer hair. Oh, this is actually a hide that I tanned. Look at that, scraped it. it doesn't even smell like shit. And now we're gonna use this to do the head of my moodlar. So we're just gonna take clump after clump, after clump, and we're gonna clump it on. Spin it. There you go. Careful not to wreck your, break your thread. And then you kind of do diagonal wraps to kind of secure it in place a bit more. And you just got to kind of take your time with this part of it. Work it around the town, up and down. And you really want to pack it back. And that way you'll get a nice tight head. Jeez, she's looking good. I'm gonna put lead eyes on, and this will help it get down. See, it's gonna look like that. Not ready for that phase yet. We still have another wrap of deer hair we're gonna do. Be a little easier on myself and not make it as obnoxiously large as the other one. Sometimes you gotta help it around 
especially on a big kahuna like this. I've never actually tied a mouse pattern, but <laughs> I imagine this would be what it would kind of be like. Oh, Mexico, yeah. Sorry to keep you hanging there. I'm kind of focused here for the first time in my life. Um, I had too many Coronas and I tried to do a backflip on the beach. I went up and then I came down and I landed on my face. And I have a scar here and here and here. And I basically ripped my nose off. I went to the bathroom to look at the damage and my nose could hinge open like a door and I saw between my two eyeballs into my nasal cavity. But I totally thought I was gonna to get to see my brain, but I didn't. There's a dark hole in my head. And um, that was kind of alarming. But anyway, I, uh, like I said, I'll give you the nuts and bolts of it. I went to a hospital in Mexico. My brother helped me get to the hospital. And um, I'd actually broke a vertebrae in my neck, mangled my face, and found out that it was gonna cost $22,000 American. And I, we di I didn't buy traveler's insurance, luckily. So I saved $42 there. So that was a bonus. But um, we had to call home and my mom and my grandma and max out their credit cards before they do surgery on me. I remember they strapped me down to the stainless steel table and uh, I remember the anesthesiologist, the surgeon, a bunch of nurses, they're all eating nachos. At least that's what I remember. At least the anesthesiologist was eating nachos. And then they yelled at him to come over and he put like some rag over my head and then I just passed out. He had a big mustache. Oh, I was also told that my nose could fall off. There was a good chance that the tissue, because the bones were so mutilated, that in uh, like eight hours or something, my nose, the tissue would start to die and my nose could fall off, which is alarming, obviously. And um, so I was, that was a source of panic but it didn't fall off. They put it back on. Um, and now when I sneeze though, sometimes salsa flies out of my nose. If I sneeze really hard, guacamole. Sometimes I get guacamole. Comes out of my nose and my eye socket there. I can breathe air out of my eyeball. If I sneeze, once I sneeze really, really hard and an entire seven layer dip came out of my nose. Lucky we were heading to a potluck, so we didn't have to make anything. But yeah, good surgeons. I can't breathe out of my left nostril, but at least my nose is still on my face. Once I sneezed very hard and a tequila worm came out of my nose too. So as you can see, I've secured a, a lead eye and it's starting to really look like something that a lingcod would eat. Um, Whip finish. Oh, I think the baby is awake. Sorry, I may have to go try to get him back down. He's just there. Maybe I'm being too loud. Yeah, look at that, hey? So Jim, ow, fucking sharp hook. There's something else I wanted to tell you. I don't remember what it was. That fly is done. And here is the finale of that, of this process. Recently got sent the lawnmower 3.0. I shaved for this, by the way. I don't know if you noticed, for the season finale. My balls I'm talking about with the lawnmower uh, 3.0. Your balls will thank you. It's this. You shave your face. You shave your balls. I'm going to do that right now. And you can, you might have guessed it. 
you can shave your muddler minnow. Give him a nice haircut. Oh, might have dulled the blade there. So yeah, if you're at home in quarantine, running out of things to do, order yourself this lawnmower and then you can shave your balls and tie some sweet ass muddler minnows with it too. And then uh, I will go use this now, tomorrow or the next day. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought of the fly, of the stand up. Uh, and um, I gotta go. Please subscribe and tell your friends and stay healthy out there, everyone. Uh, okay, love ya. Bye. Come in, you little lunatic. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Captain Quinn has a baby? Someone should probably take that away from him. That baby would be better off without a father. <laughs>